Thank you very much. Um, they say never to start a presentation with an apology. I'll start with three, just to buck a trend. Uh, firstly, my footprint's about there. So, um, so apologies for that. I'm still working on getting it down. Um, secondly, uh, an apology to Kevin. I'm afraid I haven't had time to expunge all these words from my presentation. I think you might still find, hopefully, not too many of them. Uh, and thirdly, I didn't know I was presenting until um, yesterday evening. So if I have any rough edges, you'll excuse me. Um, uh, is this going to work? Right. I was asked to talk about doing business in a, a resource-constrained world. Um, I don't know what Willie was going to talk about, but I think it's something similar. Um, I, best Foot Forward, uh, our technical director, of, is a founding member, was a founding member of the Global Footprint Network, so we have some, uh, some involvement there. And I sit on the Standards Committee. I don't know if that's particularly relevant about what I'm going to talk about, but at least there's a tenuous link there between myself and Willie. Um, I also can't see my slides on there, but that's, I'll live with that. Um, this is just to show we how we're sort of trying to sort of walk the talk or cycle the talk. That's me cycling into Buckingham Palace to meet the Queen, to accept our Queen's Award. And uh, amongst all the, the limousines and everything, I thought it was quite refreshing. They don't have bike racks in, in uh, Buckingham Palace, but, but the guard there said it wasn't necessary. It was the most secure place in London. Um, uh, look, looking, uh, I think it's about doing business in a resource constraint, it's about working within natural limits, and that's what I very, very much by region are about, and ourselves are about looking at the ecological footprint going beyond carbon, because it's not all about carbon. And I think some of the issues that businesses are facing now, and will increasingly face, are to do with some of these other impacts, and I think we need to look at a holistic picture to make sure we don't start making the things worse in the course of trying to make them better. I think Wolfgang Sachs said it very succinctly, uh, that the Eventually, the world will no longer be divided by the ideologies of the left and right, but those who believe in limits and those who don't. And I think it's increasingly becoming the case. He said this about four years ago, and very prescient, and I think we're really beginning to see it very much now in the policymakers, people realising that policies to reduce carbon also have undesirable uh, effects. Um, you might have seen this graph. This shows the global ecological footprint steadily rising over time. It also gives you an idea about where carbon falls within the scale of things. The ecological footprint doesn't measure all environmental impacts, but tries to make a good stab at it. And you'll see, sort of simplifying it, carbon's about half the problem. And you can see, in, I know uh, Sue Riddison talked about the issue with biofuels, and that's a good example of where things are currently going wrong in some of the policy in an attempt to um, satisfy the need to reduce carbon when making some of the other impacts worse. This is a very visual illustration of it. This is looking at our fish stocks. Um, and if you see on the left-hand side there, there's a little date. And as I hopefully click this, you'll see that some of the sea will start to go red. Uh, and this looks at the, uh, as the sea goes red, that's the area that's, that's fished to exhaustion. So you'll see how that changes over time. And this is very much about an impact other than carbon looking at our food supply. Maybe you could say, well, it doesn't affect me very much, but it, you know, the 1.2 billion who rely on fish as their primary source of protein, this is really uh, very serious to them. We can start to look at aquaculture and other options, but for them, it's not really an option. Um, a lot of talk about the credit crunch, and, and uh, something that Paul Eakin said sort of rung a bell earlier about you know, the cut in VAT, the 12 billion spent on that, could it have been spent better? And I think it really could have done, and, and I did some similar research for The Guardian recently, looking at what would happen, all the money they put into propping up the finance sector, what would happen if they put that into renewable energy instead? Well, the simple answer is very much along the lines of what Paul said, we could have met our 2020 renewable energy targets and get a return on investment of 6%. You know, that's far better than you'll get in any bank at the moment, and, and certainly uh, worth looking at. So the focus really should be on looking at the resource crunch, not the credit crunch. And if we don't deal with those, we get a happiness crunch, a very uh, a short supply of happiness. And I think that's where we're heading if we don't tackle some of these other issues. Um, I'm talking rather quickly, one, because I always talk quickly, uh, but secondly, because I've been told I only have 10 minutes. So if anything is unclear, then do answer it, ask it in the questions later. Um, so this is the policy response. I was asked to talk about the policy response and the business response to this sort of the, the, this resource crunch that's looming. Well, it's a bit of an alphabet soup, really. Um, I think Dilbert, the car great cartoon character, would have called it a confusopoly. Uh, what we're seeing is this massive um, uh, 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 array of standards and guidelines coming out at all these different levels, the national level, the organizational level. Not much at the project or personal level yet, but I predict they're coming. 
uh, and also at the product level. We've seen the new PASS 2050 um, from the Carbon Trust and the BSI and DEFRA recently launched in November looking at the carbon footprinting of product supply chains. We've got World Business Council Sustainable Development doing ISO standards on corporate uh, carbon footprinting. So all these things expanding and legislation to back them up. I think the standards are pretty good at the moment. The legislation's a bit of a mess. Um, this is something from the Business Council on World uh, for Sustainable Development, really just highlighting, underpinning the sorts of things I've been talking about, that businesses really cannot function if the ecosystem services they depend on are degraded or they're in collapse. Um, so looking briefly at the risks, and I won't go through these in any detail, I'll also then look at the opportunities for business, and I think this affects everyone really uh, in whatever sector they're in. Um, the decline in ecosystem services, really, the water scarcity, degradation of soils, and you've seen the impact on things like ecosystems like uh, the oceanic uh, seafood. Those are really affect most fundamental supplies and other resources that businesses use, increasing costs. People have had an eye on the sort of varying cost of carbon on the markets, but if they actually look to commodity prices, it's steadily rising. So, you know, anyone in the construction center, uh, sector who knows, has to buy raw materials, knows this very well. Uh, there's our energy efficient fan coming on. Um, so there's um, also the issue about decreasing quality. Often there's lower grade ores if you're looking at, if you're in the primary uh, sectors. Um, also issues about water and forest products and tougher regimes and stakeholder pressure, reputational risk. We get increasingly asked to do work um, to try for, for green claims. There's the DEFRA's green claims code. There's also the Advertising Standards Authority putting something together because no longer will businesses be able to get away with making these green claims in the future without actually substantiating them. And that's a good thing. What about the opportunities? Well, basically, any eco-efficient business is basically shielding themselves against these risks. Um, they've got the lower costs, the income security, the protection against the volatility of the prices. They're better road to exploit new market opportunities, and all those other types of um, good and wonderful things that they can position themselves for. But importantly, I think people have brought these up along um, as we've been talking on the different um, stands and as different speakers have, have talked about these issues, they've touched on most of these. I mean, essentially, it's about better be, being able to better plan for the future, and that's something we all need to be doing far more of. So one of the things that Best Foot Forward thinks is very key to all this is measurement. Um, we've got in place historically very good financial measurement systems, very poor carbon and resource measurement systems. We need to do far more with that. The standards which are coming along help, but we also need tools to help people uh, measure. At the moment, there's a big skills gap. There's not that many people who have got familiarity in measuring resources. If you compare it with the number of accountants in the world, uh, financial accountants, we need the similar number of environmental accountants or more. Uh, in, the, in the interim, we're looking at plugging that skills gap with some tools that people can use. Um, looking at big hitters, um, uh, again, people speaking up mentioned the issues about transport, food, and housing being the big hitter areas there. This is some work we did for WWF on a One Planet Business Program, which I recommend reading that report. It highlighted in the UK economy where the big hitters are. Uh, and I won't go through any case studies, but if people are interested, we've got 30 or so case studies on our site um, that they can look at. Um, this is interesting. I will give you one or two examples of how this is being used. And this is the sort of thing Willie might have spoken about, I guess. This is looking at, um, this is a, a technique used by a Swiss investment bank to decide where to invest money. Um, and basically, I'll just quickly explain this graph. On the, on the, the, the x-axis there, you've got countries which are in ecological deficit, i.e. they have a net deficit on their ecological footprint. And those on this side are in ecological credit. So these are on this side, the, the one, the green bulls and bears over here are in ecological credit, and the ones over there, the red bulls and bears, are in ecological deficit. And then the vertical axis is about their trade surplus. This is, in fact, their financial equivalent of their deficit or credit. And so essentially, you can see that if you're looking to, if you have lots of money, if you're one of the few who does have some money at the moment, and you want to look where you're investing, you really should be investing up there in the top right-hand corner where the green balls are, because these are people who are financially, in terms of their trade balance, doing well, and also in terms of their ecological balance, doing well. So this is actually information being used for guiding very big investment decisions by a Swiss investment bank. Uh, interestingly, the UK is over there in the red bears, and I think uh, the decisions over the last few weeks probably has pushed itself even more into to the red bear territory, and there be dragons, because that's the area you really don't want to be in. Um, I, I can't sort of st not take the opportunity to mention the Z book, which is receiving a, a Reba President's Award tonight, which is, I'm very pleased with. But it also tackles a lot of the issues people have been talking about, about building sustainable communities. I wrote it with Bill Dunster and Bobby Gilbert. Um, 
and it covers a lot of the issues about how you build sustainable communities, and it does look very much outside the red line, and that's really its focus, looking at the very broader issues. So really, my final slide, um, doing business in a resource-constrained world. Here's my sort of advice uh, for what it's worth. Uh, measure your footprint, keep on top of the standards and the legislation. Um, look at the quantify and manage the risk that's involved, set reduction targets, identify and maximize the opportunities, monitor progress, engage stakeholders, plan for the future, but I think most of all, have some fun. Thank you. Thank you.